one of the noblest birds ever created by Almighty God is the American bald eagle. In fact, so noble is this fowl that he is our national emblem. Not long ago, out of the sometimes murky skies of central Florida, a gigantic specimen of the American bald eagle fluttered to the ground and sat disconsolately alongside a super highway along which unheeding cars sped. Now what an eagle was doing in Florida is a mystery. I never heard of one being down there, but then I learned recently that they have cougar there, and I never heard of that before. Apparently, he was greatly off course. There he sat by the side of the road. There it sat. Now, Almighty God watches over birds and people. Not a sparrow falls from heaven, but that he knows about it. Even the hairs of our heads are numbered. So he was watching over this eagle because in this crowd of people passing by was a man, an expert in Florida wildlife. And according to the paper, he took the bird and cared for it. And what I understood was that somebody, for what reason I personally cannot even dimly imagine, had shot this bird and inflicted damage to its wing. But it was reported that they thought they could fix the wing. And if they were able to do that, there was a day when they would have brought the bird back out on the side of the highway and he would have spread those gigantic wings of his and he would have let out that incredible screech of the eagle and he would have taken off like a 747 jet into the Florida skies and headed for the mountain vastnesses and heights where he belongs, clasping the crags with crooked hands, master of the high places. Now, you know, you and I have eagles built into us. But we get a lot of blows, suffer difficulties and disappointments, and we're wounded, and we flutter down and sit by some highway saying uh, we're weak, can't do it, can't achieve goals, can't accomplish the things that we wanted to do, then the uh, Lord will speak to you and remind you that you're an eagle. Because he says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That is, they'll have their wings fixed. They shall rise up like eagles. 
on those wings. So, in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, reciting the heroes of the faith and what they sometimes call the Westminster Abbey of the Scriptures, speaking about everyday people like we are, it said, who out of weakness were made strong. That is what this religion of yours and mine is about, to make you strong out of weakness. Now, I don't know what you've been doing all week long or what your thoughts have been or how down or up or moderate they've been. But let me tell you something. You've come to the right place. Not only this church, but any church. Because they can get up and read you out of a book. The most reliable book ever printed. Where it says, you can rise up with wings as eagles. You can run and not grow weary. You can walk and not faint because out of weakness you are made strong. And you can be strong always. How do I know that? Because every last one of us is stronger than we think we are. Almighty God has built into you a reserve of physical strength which you very seldom use, but which is there, residential, in potential, under crisis. Now take this poop desk. I cannot lift that, and I'm giving it all I've got. I just move it a little. But if somebody came up here to attack Dr. Drensfield, my friend, I could move this thing and get it in the way of the attacker. Why? Because that would be a crisis. And adrenaline would shoot through my system. If somebody was having a heart attack in that balcony, and this doesn't necessarily going to happen. <laughs> you could get up there. You see, that is in you. You are stronger than you think you are. Now, there's a little town in Illinois called Belleville, and a train goes through the town, one of the few towns left where a train goes through. And two cars had come on to the railroad track just ahead of time when the train was due, and they hit each other with a terrific impact and were stuck on the track. And the train was whistling in the distance. The gates were down. The bell of the train was ringing. The whistles were screaming. The brakes were sliding. In one of these cars, the occupant of the other had gotten out, but in one of these cars was a young mother with a little baby boy. The impact of the two cars had welded these doors in such a manner that they couldn't be opened by the occupant on the inside. Here was a mother with a baby, train bearing down upon her. The engineer was trying his best to stop it, but you can't stop a long train of cars within a, a short distance, and it had the momentum and power that no power on earth could stop. When up drove a little 17-year-old girl named Joyce Johnson, probably weighed a hundred and two or three or four or five pounds, just a slender, nice little girl. She at once perceived of the situation. She saw the mother with the baby, 
and she dashed under the gate. She took hold of the door. She gave it a monumental tug. It opened just enough that the mother could pass the baby out. And then she herself, being a very slender mother, she got out. And the two girls with the baby ran from the tracks just as the train hit the two stalled cars and demolished them. They hugged each other and they cried and patted the baby's head. And the mother said, how, how could you do it? And little Joyce said, Something inside of me told me that it depended upon me and that I could do it, that I must do it. And she did it. Any one of you could have done the same thing. Now, if you've got that kind of physical strength inside, built in by the Creator who knew you would need it, haven't you also got this? Other kind called mental strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength. Ah, yes, you're, you're greater than you think you are. You can handle any problem. You can meet any crisis. You can deal with any situation. We have a member of this church. He lives in California, and he's seldom here, but he's a loyal member of the church. His name is Justin Dart. He's the chairman of the board of the Dart Craft Corporation, which was a merger recently put together by Mr. Dart. He's probably one of the few greatest businessmen in the United States. When he was a young fellow, he played football for Northwestern. And apparently, while he was good, he wasn't doing his best. So one day in the second half, the coach gave his team a speech. And I said, all right, boys, get out there for the second half. But he called, Dart, come back here a minute. Oh, Dart came back. Yes, sir, coach. Listen, son. I want to tell you something. You've got it in you to be the greatest guard that Northwestern in its long and wonderful history ever had. Go out there and be that because it's in you to be it. Dart said all of a sudden he felt 10 feet tall. And he ran out on the field, as he says, running tall. And he'd been running tall ever since. For not long ago, he was given the golden medal of the National Football Association, which has been given to six presidents of the United States great football men like Alonzo Stagg and others. Only 25 people have received it. When he was granted this medal, he said, I've learned in life that by a power which is hard to define, I can meet any problem and any difficulty. Now, old Justin is ill. I have a great affection for him, and I pray for his recovery to full health because this man has taught me that nothing need break you down. 
because you can be strong always. Great outstanding people who accomplish things know this. I was reading an article about Lee Iacocca of the Chrysler Corporation, a very innovative business executive. He says he had six rules that would guarantee success. And what do you think the first one was? The first one was, so think that you can make the best out of the worst that will ever happen to you. Make the best out of the worst that can ever happen to you. So when the worst happens and you say, this is the worst thing in the world, nothing ever happened to me like this before, this is the worst thing that ever happened to me, then you don't go on like that. You say, now, how can I take this uh, worst that's happened to me and make it the best thing that ever happened to me? Now, that is what you call the application of spiritual adrenaline. <laughs> Now I know this sounds easier than it actually is. And I had an experience not long ago. I was on an airplane, a big airplane, a L-10 or something. That's about 12 seats across or more. But there weren't many people on this plane. I sat across from a husband and a wife. I was here across the aisle. I was there, and the man was there, and the wife was next to him. And we got into one of the worst storms you ever heard of in your life. Now, I fly a great deal, and I very seldom get into a storm anymore. Seems like they can get around them and get above them and get below them. They aren't as bad as they are, or maybe they talk you out of it. I don't know. <laughs> but at any rate, this one wasn't escapable and it took his big plane and like two gigantic hands it wrenched it around like that and then dropped it 5,000 feet well maybe it was only 500 feet but it <laughs> it seemed like 5,000 feet and uh, my wife wasn't with me I was there all by myself and I didn't have anybody to ask how, how we thought we were going to get along so so uh, I said to myself, what is the tension quotient of these wings? How much can this wing stand? And all of a sudden, it would rip it again and slide up and down and fall. And all the stewardesses, the flight attendants had their seat belts on and no lunch was being served. <laughs> and I offered to earnest prayers to the Lord for the pilot, for the airplane, for myself that I'd get home, and for all the other people that they'd live through it. <laughs> and then I heard a conversation between the husband and the wife, and it went something like this. He says, do you think we'll get there? <laughs> she says, I don't know. We're here. We got to get there or someplace. And he said, you know, these planes are strong, but no plane is made to, to, stand, to stand this kind of, of pressure. And she said to him, you know what you want to do? Think strong. And if it hadn't have been the circumstances, I'd have made a note of that to use it in a sermon because <laughs> it was, think strong. I'd stop sitting here telling me what's going to happen and thinking disaster. Think strong that the plane will be strong, that you will be strong. And he bowed his head, and I could see he was praying. Then she happened to look over to me, and I swear to you this is exactly what happened. She apparently recognized me. She said to him, honey, tell you what, you go over there and sit by Dr. Peel. He thinks strong. <laughs> well, 
she didn't know what a slender reed she was putting her for her. So he came over and sat by me and he said, what do you think of this? I said, this is nothing. I said, these big old planes, they just ride the storm and it's beautiful. Well, you know, he made me think strong. So I got him to thinking strong. And strangely enough, you know, this, uh, uh, this storm w faded out and the air became reasonably calm. So it, it's, it's not all that easy. There is built into every human being a mental and a spiritual strength that can withstand any difficulty and any crisis. And that idea of thinking strong, which the lady suggested, is very sound. I'm going to preach a sermon on it sometime. In fact, maybe I'm doing it right now. Who knows? <laughs> think strong. How do you think? When you get up in the morning and you have to face some difficulties, do you think weak or do you think strong? I like it. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up with wings like eagles. Then they'll be able to run, not get tired. When it gets down to just prosaic walking, they'll be able to handle that and not faint. Ah, yes. Yeah. Think strong. And you can. Because this faith is so designed that out of weakness you shall be made strong. The more I think about this, the more I remember people like this. Long, long while ago, there was a little boy, eight years old. He must be nigh on to 60 now. But I knew him when he was eight. He had a sister, age 12. And the two of them had a mother, age late 20 or 30. Anyway, this was in Brooklyn, Flatbush. And I was pastor of a little church. The father suddenly died one night. I went to see them, and a little boy met me in the hall, and he says, uh, I got to be strong with God's help. I'm the man in the house now. I put my arm around him. I said, yes, Freddie. You're the man of the house now. Then the sister came to me, and she said essentially the same thing. I, Daddy's gone. I got to be strong. Mommy's dazed. And Billy, he's just a kid. I got to take charge. I said, yeah, honey. You'll handle it. So then I went in, sat down with the mother, and she said, for the children's sake, I got to be strong. I'm both mother and father now. I got to stand up to it. I said, yeah, you'll do it. I used to see them in church, three of them. They believed in Jesus. They believed in God. They believed what it said in the Bible. They were strong always. And so can you be. So can I. 
so must we. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the strength that we must have out of your great and inexhaustible supply of strength. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.